Thank you, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Stuart Nash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Look, I, I would like to talk about, um, about Clause 75. Oh, good. And this relates to Section 1. This is an amendment to the Trademarks Act 2002. And um, it's, it's about Section 139A, and it's amended. And the Chief Executive may, sus may suspend accepted notice. And, Mr Chair, there are a couple of questions I have here, because, I, look, I, um, I understand uh, the efficiency that digital communications provide. Of that, there is absolutely no doubt. In fact, MB is doing some fantastic stuff uh, in this space around providing efficiency, and they've actually quantified it to a, to a huge extent. But what, what here, this is the thing that I'm just, you know, I'm sure the Minister and the Chair has, um, you know, it's, it's, an easy, it's an easy question, but I just wouldn't mind knowing the answer. What it says here, and I quote, after section 139A3B insert, by emailing it to a person at an email address that is used by the person. Now, you know, at the risk of sounding glib, uh, you're never going to email it to an email address that isn't used by the person, of course. But, but I'm keen to know how do you determine whether an email address is actually used by the person or not? And the, thing, the reason I ask that is, you know, does it have to be acknowledged? Does the CEO or someone on behalf of the CEO have to seek authorisation or have to seek confirmation that, in fact, this email address is one that is being used? Or is it a defined time period? For example, if this person has emailed the CEO or, or an agent or, or someone with an MB uh, within one month, within three months, within six months, and let me give you an example. I used to have a, have a Hotmail address, which I used the whole time. I moved, to, I moved to Gmail. I don't even know if the Hotmail address exists in any way, shape or form. In fact, um, as Dr Clark mentioned, the amount of stuff we get through the parliamentary server these days, I haven't checked my, email my Gmail address for a length of time. It is still operational, oh, but <laughs> send it to my ESPS. But, but the, the reason I ask this question is what defines an email address that is used? Is it a time period? Is it, um, is it an email confirmation back from the person or is it some other test? And the reason I ask that is because what it actually says under section 139A3 is it says insert, and I quote, in the absence of proof to the contrary, written advice that is emailed to a person must be treated as received by the person on the second working day after the date on which it is emailed. And in proving that the advice was emailed, it is sufficient to prove that the advice was properly addressed and sent to the email address. Now, um, uh, the company's office could send something to Hotmail because I have no doubt that at some point they have that as a valid email address. It will go to that address and there will be no bounce back that says, sorry, Stuart Nash no longer uses that address. So uh, according to this, what it says is they could send an email and they will have, well, the officials, I should say, the CEO, will have to make an assumption that that email is received. What I would have liked to have seen, to be honest, in this bill is the test on whether an email address is used by the person should be a response from that person that they have actually received that advice. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against emailing um, uh, documentation. You, you do have to use common sense, and, and, this is, and the, use of technology, the use of technology will drive innovation in a way that we haven't seen for years, this is, you know, ever. There's no doubt about that, and I'm all for innovation to drive technology, certainly in the SME sector. But I do think we need to be a little bit careful because if we make assumptions that you know a good, hard-working tradesperson that's been out there plumbing your house or digging your ditches or rowing your house is going to come home and check their emails every single day, then I think we need to test that assumption. It may be that email addresses are used once a week. It may be once a month, and that may be enough. But I think we have to be very careful about assuming that people use technology on a daily basis. And let me give you an example, a very recent example, uh, the Napier water crisis. The, the council put out something on Facebook, and we were supposed to know that. And as someone of my age who is on Facebook but not particularly competent, I don't check Facebook the whole time, so we cannot make assumptions around the use of technology. And I just, <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, you, we, we, you should probably keep out of any debate around water in, in Hawke's Bay at this point in time. But, but, yeah. um, but what I would like to say is we need to test these assumptions, and what we absolutely need to do is 
I think, in terms of uh, validating any um, sending of, of electronic transactions, be assured that, in fact, it has been received. I call the Honourable Tracy Martin. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chair.